Hi, welcome back to my channel and my review for The Crow, the new one. Uh, reluctant to call this a remake because this is actually another adaptation of the original comic book series. And if you saw my most recent video upload, I did just review the original Crow from 1994, which I did really enjoy going back to. Uh, even though I think it's not a perfect film, it does have its flaws, I still really enjoyed revisiting that. And I wasn't planning to see this new uh, version of The Crow just because I heard it was awful. Um, but I did see a review for it today, actually, which was basically defending the movie by saying that people are, have been going in way too hard on it just because it's trying to remake a cult classic, you know, um, a film property that is probably best left um, untouched again now, especially after what happened with Brandon Lee in that original film. And people were maybe going a little bit too hard on this one. So I went to give it a chance last night. And unfortunately, this was even worse than I thought it was going to be. This movie is really quite rough uh, and was a little bit difficult to get through. Um, I think that it's not one of those movies that's embarrassing. You know, it's not so bad that it's good. I mean, I, I reviewed last year Jeepers Creepers Reborn. You know, that's a movie that's just so pathetic that you can laugh at how ridiculous it is and kind of be entertained by that. This is not one of those movies. You know, it's it's still competently made, you know, it's got good cinematography, the visuals are all quite striking, um, there's some okay action scenes as well, and there is that sort of sense that there is at least some people on board this production that do know something about making a movie. Uh, just the overall experience is bleak, uh, it's dull, it's kind of depressing, and there's just nothing about this the experience of this movie that will stay with me. And I kind of feel a little bit sorry for Bill Skarsgård because he is a very talented actor. You know, I really have liked him in his previous roles. And he just came across really wooden here. So I have to think it was down to the story and the directing of him as an actor uh, that just wasn't really working. Okay, so the story for this one is basically the same as the original where you've got Eric and Shelley, these two lovers who are brutally murdered one night by this gang. And after that, Eric is then brought back, he's resurrected by all this supernatural law involving a crow in order to avenge her by killing all of these gang members. And the one thing they decided to do with this story, which I actually thought was a, an interesting way to go, was to actually develop the relationship between him and Shelley leading up to this killing. Because... In the first film, whilst you really do get a sense of how much he loved his girlfriend and why he is on this path of revenge, you don't feel as invested in the character because you never really got to understand their relationship. So I thought that was a chance to maybe improve uh, on that factor here. But unfortunately, the issues really do begin there because the chemistry between these two actors is just non-existent. Now, Bill Skarsgård, he is a talented actor. Um, and I have seen him have good chemistry before. If you think of Barbarian, where he meets the girl that comes in to the Airbnb, I think the opening scenes with them are really great and felt really natural. This, to me, feels really clunky, and it's probably slightly down to the fact that FKA Twigs is not a particularly talented actress. I know she's mainly a musician, but not the best actress uh, by any means, and I think it's something about the dialogue between them that... Oh, it's just that it's got that very teen angsty vibe about it. You know, it feels like a couple of teenagers talking to each other. And it's a little bit distracting when you can see these two actors are clearly like well into their 30s. So it's a little bit embarrassing. And you just don't really get the sense of these two people that have this undying love for each other. You know, that they would do anything for each other, go to the ends of the earth for each other. You just don't get that sense. Like, they meet in the opening of the film. You get to see about 10 minutes of them hooking up, smoking weed together, going to a couple of clubs together. And then this event takes place where they're both killed. And the rest of the movie, because it's taking itself so seriously, um, and Eric is on just this war path, he has to get this vengeance. And you just never really buy into it because of the way that relationship is just not properly developed, it's not properly set up, and I just never got invested into the plight of this main character. But yeah, getting into the bleakness about this film, this is one of the big issues for me, that 
the film takes itself extremely seriously. You know, it's nothing like the original where you've got this kind of very self-aware, very surrealist feel about it all, so that when all of the fantastical elements start to be introduced, there's nothing jarring about, jarring about it. It all feels very natural within the context of that movie. Whereas here, this is kind of playing out like this very grounded sort of drama. So when all of this supernatural lore about the crow and this purgatory, once all of this stuff is brought in, uh, you start to really notice the issues because it feels jarring uh, within this type of movie. And even within these scenes, it basically has a go at implementing all of this symbolism in order to try and make the film, I think, feel a little bit deeper than it actually is. So it all ends up coming off just a bit ridiculous. Uh, and it just wasn't clicking for me, certainly. I think they've definitely missed a trick here with having really dull and unmemorable villains. And, you know, with the original, you had these very over-the-top villains that you, you understand the hate for them straight off the bat. So when it actually does get down to all of the action and Eric taking all these people out one by one, you're somewhat invested in the in the story here, why he is so angry, why he needs to kill these people. Whereas here, this... Uh, this uh, criminal gang, they're basically set up in a very mysterious way where everything about them is not revealed until right towards the end of the film. So for all of the action, as brutal and entertaining as some of that was, you don't really care about anything. You don't feel anything. As I say, like they haven't set up the relationship between him and Shelley, so you're not buying the fact that he would go to these lengths for this girl that he met. And I don't really care about these people that he's taking out. And, you know, he's in full rage, you know, absolutely destroying these people. And you just don't feel anything. The whole experience is very hollow because none of these characters have been properly set up and fleshed out. And I also really hated the way they're introduced. Like in the opening scene of the movie, you get this scene with these two girls and they've got... One of them's got a video on this phone that's incriminating them to do with something and then they introduce this weird villainous group and the whole thing is very confusing. It's a very odd setup for the movie where I actually feel like I felt like I'd missed something, like I'd missed the detail. But it actually is all explained later on in the film, but for the first 20 minutes you're sitting there uh, just sort of confused about what's going on. Um, even when you're first getting to meet Eric and Shelley as well, like... It kind of looks like a prison that this place they're in where they first meet each other, but it's actually I'm assuming it's a, a sort of like a, a drug rehabilitation center because when they both make their they escape with ease just like out a window. <laughs> but up until that point, for some reason, I had in my head that they were in a jail together. So there's just something about the setup of the movie and not and there's not been much like attention paid to all the little details. So the flow is just really affected and it just it just becomes a really jarring experience of a movie. I mean, some people will say that the one scene that really stands out is the whole opera house sequence, uh, which is when the action really gets started, when you know Eric really sort of discovers his powers as the crow, and he's in this opera house, and he basically takes out a load of people. And, uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's some of that, that stuff was fun. Like, it's much more brutal than I was expecting. It's much more violent uh, than the original. This has literally got heads flying, limbs being cut off, blood absolutely everywhere uh, so it was quite surprising how far they went with the like extremity of the violence but even from a choreography standpoint I don't think it was anything that special you know this is not John Wick uh, we're talking about here this is still just fairly generic action stuff just with the gore and the violence uh, uh, gore and the violence amped way up um, so even the more standout scenes of the movie for me didn't really do much to save itself and the the whole experience just left me feeling a little bit cold to be honest and as I say going back to people talking about reviews defending it on the basis that it's being judged just too harshly against the original Crow I don't think that's the case at all I think if you go in and judge this film on its own merits it still is a pretty damn horrible movie and I did say that, you know, I don't think, I think people are being, you know, too over the top with their, you know, clickbait thumbnails saying this is the worst movie of the year. And for me personally, it is now actually my worst movie of the year so far. Granted, though, I haven't seen Madam Web and the, um, 
I said the uh, the second Rebel Moon film. Uh, so they may end up coming down below this. But right now, for me, of the thirty or so films I've seen this year, The Crow is going to have to be the worst of them. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to really recommend that you skip this film. Nothing much to see with this one. So I'm going to give this a one point five out of five rating. So that's all of my thoughts on the new Crow movie. Please do let me know down in the comments what you thought of uh, this version of the Crow. Leave your thoughts there. Also, please do consider subscribing to my channel if you've been enjoying my content. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.